Just a disclaimer, there will be some profanity in this video. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video and for even showing your girls some love. If you're new here, my name is Lorena Guadalupe and I'm a respiratory therapist. I don't have problems having ideas for YouTube. Like I have tons of ideas. It's just putting them out there, working on them and actually filming and editing. That's where I have the trouble with. Hopefully I will be a lot better this year in uploading. I'm trying to find an algorithm that works well in my life because I am working my first 13 week contract at a local children's hospital here and I'm actually very busier now than I was last year even with school but I am gonna try my hardest to put more videos out here and if you guys have any type of video that you would like for me to put out here just let me know in the comments below in today's video I will be doing a Q&A respiratory edition what is a respiratory therapist we are specialized healthcare professionals when it comes to the cardiopulmonary system emphasis on the pulmonary we treat and manage critical ill patients and as well as chronic patients we are the people that the nurses be calling to go save their asses because their patient is going down, they're desaturating, and they just can't breathe. And to do the stat ISs as soon as possible. The second question is, did you go to a Voltec school or college? I got my associates in applied science and respiratory care at Rose State College, which is Midwest City, Oklahoma. It's a community college. And then I got my bachelor's at Midwestern State University in Texas. Question number three, did you recommend an associate's or a bachelor's? I recommend doing what the hell? It's gonna be more convenient for you. And I don't say this in a rude way, claro que no. I'm just saying whatever works best for you in your life is what's gonna be a better choice for you. Many respiratory therapists, we graduate with our associates and then we work. Then we go back to school and get our bachelor's while we're still working. That way we can start making this money. Many are okay with just an associate's because they get to work. They just wanna go and make their money. They don't really wanna do anything extra, which a lot of people are like that. And that's completely fine. It's whatever the hell you wanna do. Other RTs just want to be able to have their bachelors just in case they want to advance in their career if they want to become a director a supervisor which i know there's places out there that will hire a supervisor with an associate just because they have the years of experience and they're good at their job there are many rts that have years under their belt have amazing work ethics and are just good at their job that they don't need to have a bachelor's to go into a supervisor position other places might be a little strict other therapists don't really want to be a respiratory therapist for a long time or just doing that job for a long time. They want to become professors, they want to become directors, they just want to do a little bit more in their career path so many of them go for a bachelor. Also RTs are able to become case managers or clinical specialists and many of those positions require a bachelor. Many of the times people use respiratory therapy as a stepping stone to other careers that they want to do. So many respiratory therapists go for PA, perfusion, and AA. I really do recommend doing whatever is convenient to you, whatever you want to do with your life. Do whatever works for you boo boo. Question number four is can you get a job with a bachelor's yes you can you can get a job with a bachelor's you can get a job with an associate as long as you have your credentials you are able to get a job question number five what is the difference between a nurse and a respiratory therapist nurses are not specialized unless they go into a specialized area and usually they cross train after their degree the nurses treat the patient as a whole they assess from head to toe and they also administer other medications that we can administer like heart renal pain sedative all types of medications that we don't get Nurses also have way more opportunity than respiratory therapists. They can advance easily in other aspects of the hospital. They just have so much opportunity under their field. A lot of respiratory therapists, I have seen them go into the nursing field. They can advance the way they can as a respiratory therapist. Question number six is tips for mechanical ventilation class. I think it's important to understand what is on all ventilators. There's a lot of different type of ventilators that have the same modes, that have different modes. Things that mechanical ventilators will always have is FIO2, P, rate, and tidal volume. Understanding those things and how to adjust them per your patient's needs is very important. Example is P, which helps prolong the closure of alveoli, which helps with more oxygen exchange and able to oxygenate your patient better. I also recommend understanding the common modes in ventilations like assist control, SIMV, pressure control ventilation, and how they work for patients. I also recommend understanding what causes high alarms and low alarms and knowing how to troubleshoot the ventilator when it comes to your patient. Another thing I recommend is understanding waveforms and loops. Just looking at the waveforms and loops, you're able to figure out what's going on with the mechanical ventilator and your patient. You're able to fix 
fix it, making it more comfortable for them. Question number eight is advice on salary. I'm not really sure how to answer this question because each state varies and you know, cost of living is a way more in California than it is in Oklahoma, vice versa in other states. Like it's really hard to like really pinpoint that because some of y'all be coming at me side was like, oh, your shit's too low. Like bitch, I don't need to make that much to look good here, okay? I do recommend talking to a working respiratory therapist in your state, in your city to get basically the amount that new therapists usually make or how much therapists should be making in your area. Question number nine is advices on starting clinicals. Get all your shit together. Have your pins, your highlighters, your stethoscope, your launches, save your money using your time proactively. So bringing study material to where you can read over stuff. I would recommend more of something you can read, like just using your time more efficiently to help you do better in school. I do recommend asking questions where you're not understanding something or just to get some type of clarity if you're confused in something. This will help you just understand things more and using your time as clinical as a really good time to learn. I also recommend do not complain during clinicals. Don't come out here with this funky ass attitude talking about complaining about everything. Try not to. You should be grateful in what we have in life. If you're doing clinicals, you should be grateful that you're out there. But this also comes to say nothing's worse than a respiratory therapist than another respiratory therapist because some of them are also so fucking negative. They're so dramatic. They're so hateful. And I don't understand why therapists are like that, how they complain for having students like, bitch, you was there at one point. So why make somebody else feel like that? Majority of the time, they're just some salty hoes. And I just say that in the most humblest way possible because a lot of the times they're just reflecting on their own behaviors and trying to project it on other people. But that's not Question number, I think this is 10. Advice for new grads. Some people don't wanna go straight to work. Some people want to just chill for a little bit and get their credentials. Some people want to work. So I just recommend you doing whatever you feel like you need to do after you graduate. One thing I will emphasize is take your board exams. Don't try to prolong them. It's, it's a lot harder when you prolong your exams than it is just taking your exams. Question number 11. How is it working during COVID? Extremely mentally physically emotionally exhausting it's draining it's been horrible at least i still got a job and i can't say that for a lot of people with this past coming year so i'm very grateful where i am right now but it has been very very draining and this is the last question how did you deal with anxiety while working with patients and how did you get over it there's times in my career where it kind of goes away especially when i'm working because i'm very confident i know what i'm doing but when i first started boy have you ever had anxiety so bad get you wanted to take a pooey like that was me when i first became a respiratory therapist and there's certain times especially now i'm doing this contract at this children's hospital where like my stomach be hurting because i'm like oh my gosh but sometimes you just have to take a couple deep breaths and just do it to remember you're not by yourself you're always there with somebody so you can always ask somebody for help i do recommend asking for help asking for clarity and asking to understand sometimes when it comes to anxiety you just don't know what could happen and sometimes you Either have to do it or you have to ask help to where you can understand it a little bit more a lot of times anxiety creates this like self-doubt in your head and it makes working a little bit more hard i say this with experience i just had to just breathe in tell myself some positive affirmations letting me know that myself know like i got this i can do this that is all guys those are all the questions that i'm going to be answering today ciao